This road is ridiculous. <laughs> it's literally eight to nine hours and it is so rough. People are getting sick, people are vomiting. <laughs> but we've only got three more hours to go. Sarah Rose Nottingham. I grew up in Missouri. I live in Seattle, Washington. And today I woke up at 3.30. Didn't like it. We get in, it's dark outside, traffic isn't as bad because it's, you know, the middle of the night essentially. And we begin our journey. And then we get to rural Nepal where roads are <laughs> under construction. Monsoon season has just ended, so there's holes everywhere, mud everywhere, and uh, our drivers are all stars, and they're just swerving everywhere up and over things. Uh, okay, we just need a quick pit stop to uh, go to the bathroom and get some coffee. This road is wild. Um, it's going to be like, <clears throat> best case scenario, a seven and a half hour drive. Uh, worst case scenario, it could be eight or ten hours. There's lots of traffic. There's so many people going up and down these roads. And the road is so, so bumpy. Oh, bumpy. What a horn. Road is ridiculous. <laughs> it's literally eight to nine hours. And it is so rough. Um, it's not, I don't know the distance, it's not even that far, but we have to go so slow because the roads are crazy. People are getting sick, people are vomiting, <laughs> but we've only got three more hours to go, so. <laughs> okay, so as I understand it, this is how you eat Nepali food. So you, it comes with rice in the middle and all these other things, and then this is the lentil stuff, right? You're supposed to pour this into your rice, and then you just kind of mix everything together. Mm. That's really good. So the drive today was epic, in my opinion. I, I never laughed so much. My name is Kiki Irvin. I'm from uh, Cherry Valley, New York. All the bumping and the, uh, just the navigating these crazy Rocky Mountain roads was, uh, it was, it was really a lifetime experience. So where we're staying tonight, it's up there, and there's a super long rope bridge we just found out we have to go across. It's pretty exciting. We arrived in Gino um, around 5.30 p.m. We're in the mountains, and the sun's going down real fast. Um, we start unloading all our gear. Everything is covered in dust because of the journey we went on. 
Um, so we're dead, like, you know, patting off our backs or our backpacks so we can put them on. And then it begins to downpour. So we get all our rain gear on and we look outside and um, our guides say, that's where we're going. And we see, um, <laughs> like, what's it called? Uh, uh, a canyon and this tiny little bridge that we have to go across to get to this gorgeous looking tea house that I think is actually a hotel. And we're off. We just had a quick little 10 minute hike. We are gonna cross this uh, rope bridge <laughs> and then head up to our tea house hotel. Uh, get settled in, have dinner, and go to bed. We are tired. That was the flipping drive. I am not sad that we have a nice short walk tonight. Then it just becomes it becomes nighttime. It's nighttime. It's fully dark, and then we have to go on this metal bridge over what we know is just this chasm in the earth. What do you think? Okay. We get there, and we're all drenched. Everything's dripping. We finally get to rooms. We shower. We change. We get our food. It's great. Everything tastes great. What is it? it fried rice, and then noodles and French fries. That's what they loaded us up with. They were the best fries. Oh my gosh. We just got our first glimpse of the mountains. Good morning. We just had breakfast. We're getting ready to head out. But... <laughs> This is our view. And as usual, this is day one. So near guarantee that it gets better from here. So this was the butt puckering rope bridge that we had to walk across last night. And I am so thankful it was dark. I don't love heights. I would have been fine, but it was way easier when it was dark. Um, well, here it is. These are two of our porters. Uh, these these guys are doing all the hard work. This is quite the way to travel. I'm used to carrying everything on my back, so <laughs> my favorite people. <laughs> Just found out that there's a mandatory two minutes of dancing every morning. I had nothing to do with it, but I couldn't possibly be more excited about it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, every after, uh, after uh, breakfast, all in the morning before leave, uh, so we will dance around two minutes in Nepali song and Nepali cultural dance like this. <laughs> like this uh. on purpose, I think we accidentally okay, hit the guy go. jackpot. Uh, we will dance on the next bit. <laughs> Let's begin! <laughs> Today, oh gosh, we began hiking. Um, I got told, ma'am, slow down, because I got so excited. I just kept like trudging up these stone steps that apparently were installed 25 years ago according to one person, but then someone else said, they've been here forever, so I have no idea. But to get those rocks into these mountains, I don't know how they brought them here. And then people have to walk up every single supply up this mountain, so I don't know how they got up here, but um, yeah, these gorgeous steps that are so helpful. We're hiking, hiking, hiking. Um, and then I start hearing bells, and I get excited because that means some livestock is nearby. <laughs> We're gonna look at you. My family are cattle farmers, so I smell those cows before I see them. I think I was corrected. They may be water buffalo, but you know, love them all the same. And so I see these, you know, pretty like not super tall, just like hefty bodied black water buffalo eating the grass, dingling in their bell. And then, once again, there are dogs everywhere. Continued hiking, elevation, saw some doggies. Saw people just like living their lives in these mountains, carrying 
metal baskets filled with chickens with like a strap that goes around their heads. And then they're just walking like it's nothing. Meanwhile, we're drinking so much water because we're not used to being in this humid climate and having this elevation and carrying a pack that they're just like, eh, it was another Sunday for us carrying the chickens down the mountain. Hey, yeah, all right. Don't expect yeah, you to. Don't break your neck. Already around half a mile in. And uh, take a little break. Somewhere behind me. Somewhere behind me. Susanna! Uh, my name is Susanna. Can you introduce yourself again? Because I was talking, I ruined it. Why are you talking over me? Good question. I should know better, shouldn't I? <laughs> I've known you long enough to know that that's not going to fly. Okay. Mm. Okay, um, start again. Uh, my name is Susanna. I live in Utah, but I'm from Brazil. How did you end up on this trip? Um, because I know Jeffrey. And um, I watched a documentary on Netflix, and it was about the big earthquake here in Nepal. And just seeing the people, I just wanted to come over and see and get to know them. For some reason, I could feel how, how warm they were, how kind, how they care for each other, and I just want to experience their culture. keep having these dance breaks for us, which is a real treat. I don't know, they, they started the trip by saying, we're gonna start each day with a two minute dance break for you Americans. And I said, oh, well this is great. I think we've gotten really into it, so it seems like every time we take a break, they're like two minute dance break. But it's never two minutes, it's like eight minutes long. <laughs> and. I can't resist, so I keep dancing harder. I'm probably gonna be really sore tomorrow, is what I can tell, and uh, we keep dancing. Um, we've danced by these beautiful shrines that are so remote, but gorgeously taken care of. Other groups have started to join our dance breaks because we're having such a good time and they all wanna dance too, so it's been really fun. All these folks that speak very different languages, gathering, <laughs> in a very remote area in Nepal, just dancing, covered in sweat, and carrying packs and just like wiggling around, having our snacks, dancing. Oh, day one. I'm so prepared. I'm so conditioned. I was like, yes, I can do it. I can do it. Um, my name is Axe and I'm from the Philippines. Where in the Philippines? I'm from Ormok, Leyte. So stay one. We kept asking the guide, uh, Zimbir. I was like, Zimbir, what is it gonna look like? And he always kept saying, gradual. In the first couple hour, yeah, I'm struggling. Like my heartbeat is so fast. I felt like my heart's gonna explode. But then I always remember what Jeffrey says, like if your heartbeat is beating so fast, uh, it's normal and um, don't think that you're out of shape. I, that's my encouragement in my head. Oh, I gotta go back here. I can't handle the shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh boy, there were so many rewarding moments today. Um, I actually got emotional like twice, just seeing those amazing mountains. It was really just incredible. So the most rewarding thing was really being able to do it, not having to like tap out or something. What I do for work is I'm a special education teacher in sixth grade. Um, and I was also an occupational therapist and still am an occupational therapist for 20 years. What will your students say when you tell them what you did? My students are going to be thrilled. So my, my principal had recommended I not tell them until I get back, but she said I can share any pictures, any videos that I take with them. And I think they're going to be really excited. Today was kind of a big day for us. Uh, we had to like up and down and up and down. The down was very challenging for my quads. I shook, <laughs> my legs were shaking quite a bit. Um, but we made it. Um, it right, it kind of dumped on us. Uh, but it was so hot. We were all very excited for the rain. We just wanted to cover our packs to keep all our gear dry because we have many days ahead of us. Um, this is our first day hiking. <laughs> and uh, uh, we finally get to this place and we're all sweaty, we're all sore, we're all hot, and we're like, it's time to unpack and it's time to shower. And we get told that uh, a hot shower costs 250 rupees and a cold shower is free. And I says to myself, I says, do the free one. So I turn it on, get some water, rinse. It's a lot of like, yeah, kind of dodgeball shower style. Like, do the arm, okay, do the other arm. Get your toe in there did not need to do a full cold plunge. I mean, people are brave when they do this, but I didn't. Just did a little bit at a time. And then I finally did just my head to do the thing, really get in there, and then turn it off, but then I'm freezing. So my hair is so cold, and I get my lead conditioner, and I do the thing, tie it up in a bun. And then Jeffrey says, Sarah, are you okay in there? <laughs> and I said, I'm great, and I would do it again. I'm just packing up. <laughs> it was wonderful. Um, yeah, cold showers. It's the way. I feel alive. <laughs> <laughs> Colorado will be first. <laughs> I did. So, uh, right now we're in uh, Sinua, Upper Sinua, which is the 2000. Uh, 2,360 meter elevation here, mm -hmm. and then tomorrow we are heading to Deorali. Uh, from here to Deorali, it takes for us uh, seven to eight hours, including lunch break. <laughs> 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 Want to watch another video? Click here. Want to learn more about my upcoming trips? Click here. Want to subscribe and like all my videos and turn those bell notifications?